hopefully uh hopefully people got the word one way or another or maybe you've just been sitting here for the last hour i don't know um <laughs> but uh yeah the the you know the future is that we're gonna use the sl public calendar as the kind of authoritative reference for for when meetings are and that's that's always the the first place to look um i'll try to I'll try to send notices out to the mailing lists and stuff if we uh, if we need to change it as well, but uh, but that's you know a little more hit or miss. Uh, so let's see what's going on in viewer land. We have we had a very busy week. This is a, probably the first time we've ever shipped three RCs in two days. Um, so uh, new RCs at that. Um, so I'll, I can tell you about those. Uh, we have a new mate that went out to RC. That's uh, mate L. Um, there is a there's the performance improvements viewer, which has a lot of nice uh, fixes for um, uh, kind of improving the frame rate um, and and making the frame rate more stable. Sorry, my, uh, my machine is about to go to sleep. I'm going to have to relocate to get plugged in someplace. Um, we have so we have performance improvements viewer, and we also have the uh, MFA viewer. So uh, we we mentioned a while back that we were working on support for multi-factor auth, and that should let people um, uh, you know secure their accounts better if they if they choose to do so. So uh, we do have an RC version of that uh, viewer available now too, if anybody wants to. Give it a try. All right, I'm getting plugged in. See if I can avoid electronic death. Ha! Victory. Okay. Um, so other than that, uh, we've also got a new project viewer that came out today. That is uh, Dirt Viewer 539, which is the performance floater and and uh, uh, automatic frame rate maintenance viewer um we we had a previous build of performance floater out uh from several months ago but it hadn't been updated recently so this is uh should be pretty extensively overhauled and if you're interested in that area take a look at it now um i know that uh yeah you know we've had some uh, i know that beck has uh some uh, kind of alternative proposals for how to handle both the performance floater and the the auto FPS topic. So you know before this gets beyond just project viewer, we're going to be uh, uh, you know trying to trying to chat with her and work out some uh, work out some uh, you know some kind of a scheme for how we're going to combine all of that stuff. Yeah, how it's going to get integrated. Uh, let's see. I think those are the big things for viewer. We're having a bunch of interesting discussions about possible future feature work. Um, some of it is hopefully getting pretty close to the point where we can actually talk about it, but not quite today. Um, and I'm just scrolling back to see if I missed anybody. Nope, I guess not. Okay. Uh, okay, so yeah, I think those are the main things uh, that I had. Um, Mojo, Alexa, anything that uh, you guys want to talk about this week? Well, Alexa, I'm not sure if you had something on your list, otherwise I'll go on to mine. But... Oh, go for it. All right. Uh, so someone wanted to bring up theirs. Um Sure, we're, we're talking theirs. Um, I think the question, you know, that I have got is, well, what approach do we take to implementing MIRS? And, and maybe what I'm looking for feedback on is, um, you know, is there an approach where we could have user-initiated MIRS or uh, MIRS that have limited uh, scope in terms of kind of what they will render in front of them? For instance, what if MIRS only rendered avatars and they were, you know, maybe white everywhere else, clear the back buffer white, something like that. Uh, we're on the floor. Sure. Okay. Um, so, what, so, is, so, what is all the heckling, guys? You wanted it. You're going to do it. Do it in screen space, you say. <laughs> um, yeah, all right. Oh, so, so sure. Let's have a, 
a discussion. You guys want real mirrors. You don't want the mirrors I want to put together then. Huh? <laughs> right. Well, that's exactly that's exactly the case. Uh, performance is going to be uh, uh, a big hit because it's rendering the whole scene. But let's not do that. That's my point. Uh, I think the reason most people might want to use mirrors is to see themselves or to see themselves in someone else. Just reading through the uh, chat here. Photographers will want the full scene. So you're saying it's not worth doing if unless we do the full scene back? Okay. Photo mode only kind of thing. Um, I'm uh, reading Grand Pickled. Wow, that's a really cool username, but I can't pronounce it. Um, so we're using the point of reflections on water, and you are taking the scene in which you are rendering anyways. Why can't you just render to a lower resolution and do it in screen space? So I'm thinking... Um, mm, Yeah, I think anybody I, in the graphics group wants to comment on that. Uh, I see we've got Euclid here. Um, I'm not sure if Tolan is here. We don't have the opinion today. So. Yeah. Um, you know, do, are we actually doing world space reflections with the water, or is it is it some sort of uh, approximation? No, it's a full full render from the mirrored point of view, so it's the most expensive and highest quality way to do reflections. Whether it's um, really needed for the water, you know, is debatable. Um, but that's the sort of thing I think you need, you would have to do for uh, a mirror because in screen space, you can't reflect things that aren't already in view. Um, so, so we would have to adopt that approach, I think, for like a, a wall mirror. Yeah, and you could you could render to a separate render target. I don't. It, it's certainly doable, and it's always been doable because we do it for the water. However, it's uh, performance impactful. I don't, uh, I guess the screen space reflections, yeah, I'm not familiar with them, although I'm still a baby Linden, sort of. I don't, my memory only goes back a couple of years. So quick question, was it, uh, was it Firestorm that originally was looking at it or was it a different uh, TPV? When when we saw the demos back in like two thousand was it two thousand fourteen ish? Okay, I figured that uh, that Niren had it. Okay, and Firestorm, thanks. Yeah, I was gonna say I remember Z working on it back then. Yeah. Uh I suppose I was asking how we go about implementing them, but a lot of it is going to be what the potential use cases are going to be for mirrors. And maybe I see the use cases differently as, as uh, this group does. Um, like I'm hearing, like, hey, wouldn't it be great for photography? Wouldn't you know, it be good to have um, uh, the full fidelity of what a mirror can provide? Um, I was thinking that you know it's, it's going to be something that's used in people's um, homes and in and, and, and shops and what have you to just make it more of a communal experience to to you know try on clothing do things like that um 
and kind of had been thinking of our first iteration being kind of focused on that type of use case. Am I misguided there? I mean, I'm obviously uh, going to seek a lot of feedback from a lot of different folks, but interested in knowing what you guys think are the, the primary use cases. Here. It, it, indeed, it will be a shiny toy, but some people will be unhappy that it doesn't do as much as they'd like it to. Some people will be unhappy that they're getting one frame per sec. <laughs> Beck, do you not see people using mirrors and clubs and everything? Because I, I could totally see people doing that to expand the way the space feels. So a lot of people use uh, duplicated geometry to fake mirrors. And I'm sure you've seen that in a lot of places. Yeah. So that could the, the other thing that they do is they basically, something that should exist for a long time now, is they're, they're more or less creating their own HDRI, like photo box, where they're, they're abusing projectors to essentially replicate some sort of reflective environment. Like, it is insane. I don't understand why we can't use the code. Like, you, you guys already sample some sort of custom-generated cube map that looks at the environmental information and generates basically some 64 by 64 resolution-sided cube map uh, that's just the horizon and the sun that then gets applied via the uh, environment shader, I guess, calls and... Um, like, why why can we not just have custom little nodes in world where we have basically a little light probe or a cube map probe that just says, res this thing here, apply some HDRI, and then basically sample from that when the character is within a certain range of it. Or even even with the advanced, like, or, or, or the new environment, like, uh, you know, rework that you guys did. Like, you, you put all this work into this dynamic sunlight, the position of it. It's great. I love it. But, like, where's the setting where I can just load in a custom HDRI texture and just be like, you know what, screw the clouds. I just want a custom texture that I ripped off of, you know, some CG website and allow people to have, you know, at least static control. Well, uh, well guys, I think uh, well, we're definitely going to have another conversation about materials and, and lighting soon, but... Um, the uh, just rounding back to uh, mirrors, um, I'm, I'm getting a lot of feedback that hey, there's all these cool things we could do. All these people are faking mirrors. Um, what what about this idea of user initiated um, content or, or, or content that is very specific to? Um, I'm not sure what the hissing sounds from, but. Um, uh, user, um, so imagine the client basically, depending on where the client is, um, it will trigger the, the additional rendering and sampling of, of the mirror, if you will. So uh, I'm looking for feedback on, on triggered mirrors, I guess. Well, if you want to trigger them, I imagine that should be done through LSL at some point, maybe a permission. I... Well, I think the issue I have uh, with LSL is that LSL is running on the server, and so you're triggering a mirror for everyone? Or could we trigger the mirror just for the client that's going to be rendering it? It's kind of a question, really, uh, would be to my team and to the community. It's like, well, could we do that? Because we don't really have any... Uh, client well, do we just in. have a graphics preference that says show me mirrors or don't show me mirrors? Or are you thinking about something you know finer grained than that, where you want to be able to sort of control it per per item? Uh, I was thinking more of a um, hey, I'm within uh, a few meters of a mirror, I'm going to render you. There's LSL that interacts with media, and that is very much per, you know, the client, too. 
Oh, interesting. Okay. Um, yeah, to, to Coffee's point, I mean, we do have we do have a range of different qualities available for, uh, I think, like water reflections now. Um, maybe it's water transparency. I don't remember. I think it's reflections. Uh, so you could imagine that there would be like, you know, cheap janky mirrors and and fancy come back and see your picture tomorrow mirrors and there's, you know, different settings you could use to, to elect which of those you want. Well, cool. Uh, I really appreciate uh, all the feedback here, and um, happy to continue to get feedback on it. But you know, we're we're starting to think about this problem, and and uh, uh, it's on the table. A company I've been talking about it. Uh, I've been talking about it. It's something that um, we're looking at to do sometime in the near future. So we'll see what approach we take. As with anything I say, no guarantees. <laughs> so. Are are you guys at all going to like? Is there any effort for in terms of client development there to have somebody clean up the build system so I don't have to use, uh, you know, auto build into uh, some shell script if it's Firestorm into Sigwin into CMake into finally some sort of compiler there that hope well, into NMake or Make and then finally into compiler like this. It, it seems at least from an outsider that's been trying to reverse engineer at least the build system. It is insane. Um, just the sheer amount of CMake files that exist <laughs> is uh, a little bit questionable. Um, do, you, do you guys have anybody actively working on just cleaning that up and streamlining like the developer experience if you onboard anybody or if anybody in the community wants to you know really dig their teeth into this because yeah. at, at, you know setting up the environment at the moment just just to get to the point where you add and really modify things play with the engine it, it's a nightmare um, even yeah, before I start pretty, replacing uh... like glue or the GLH lib or whatever you guys are using for the function loaders and context creation of OpenGL, like it's a nightmare. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty clunky. Um, you know, the, obviously the reason that we set up the system we have originally was because of the demands of having a multi platform product. Yeah. We wanted to be able to, you know, build the same code on Mac and Windows, and at the time it was set up, also Linux, although we haven't uh, explicitly supported Linux for a while. Um, so uh, it's certainly much more, uh, you know, elaborate and hard to set up than it would be if you were able to just say, hey, I'm, you know, I want to build this thing on Windows, and so I've got these solution files, and I'm good to go. Um, but uh, I mean, short answer to your question is we don't have any immediate uh, plans to change it. But uh, you know, I certainly understand the frustration. It's you know, developers uh, internally have to spend a fair amount of time getting their system set up so that they can start you know working constructively too. Um, and uh, so it's it's you know trying to streamline it is sort of thing we might consider at some point. What what would you think about as an alternative that would be uh, you know less less hairy than what we have now if you were Kind of starting if, if it was me, I, I, so so auto build is fine, but like ha having it download these things selectively. This isn't the '90s anymore. We we have enough bandwidth to download all the packages and just have a proper libs and include directory. Like you should be able to do 90% of what's there with a proper CMake system, modern CMake. Like you you can have compile or detect you know which platform you are on you know compile for Linux or, or or targets whether you want to pass them in with like those little D variable C make uh, ver like runtime variables or whether you guys want to have like some sort of a subshell that spawns with a bunch of environment variables that get set and then C make picks those up that's fine you you guys can do ninety percent of what you do with like C uh, with with auto build and then that like intermediary step just with C make <laughs> I, I I don't understand. Why it's so like arcane to, to me? Not not to be disrespectful. I get it. You guys have been around for a long time, but to me, this this reeks of CMake was kind of in its infancy. 
Uh, somebody didn't want to learn CMake, or CMake was a little rough around the edges, so instead of refining what you guys had, well, then we're going to throw in some shell scripts. Okay, well, somebody, you know, they, there's some limitation with the shell scripts, well, then we'll throw in Python 2.7 and auto-build in there. It's like, standardize on one thing and do it well. Well, we are moving to Python 3, for whatever that's for. Yeah, that is yeah, true. You know, I, I hear you. It's obviously, a, you know, it's a, it's a pretty old system that hasn't gotten a lot of love. In recent years, so it's uh, you know it's just kind of plugging along, doing its thing. There are any like the other thing is there there are any interests? So you guys have like let's say GLH lib for the uh, the OpenGL context manager system. Are you guys at all thinking of porting off of that into something that's actually being used mainly nowadays, or like trying to also get away from some of the the weird like math? That it's doing to it looks like GLH linear does some like some sort of vector or matrix operations for projection matrices. Like Cronus, like the OpenGL guys themselves usually advocate for using like GLM for that. Like, is, is there any push to, 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 to for more standardization on that front as well to, to modernize what you guys are using? Hmm. Um, you could have told me, yeah. do you want to comment on that one? Yes. There's, I mean, it's it's in the uh, category of, you know, it, it's not broken right now, and and so it's not high priority. Yeah. To fix it. Um, there's also, you know, this we have this ongoing discussion about, you know, what's what's coming up next, and there's a good chance that what's next isn't an OpenGL renderer. Um, yeah, potentially Vulcan is our is something that's at least in discussion. So cleaning up, you know, a, a working but not very nice OpenGL uh, package is sort of low priority just for the reason that we don't know how tied we are to OpenGL long term. My response to that would be that there's this entire thing called the Vulcan OpenGL interop layer. So if you guys cleaned up the libraries that you were using for, you know, loading stuff in and, and binding stuff. You, you could port it over to Vulkan, and, like, the rendering side itself, all the shaders, all that, can still be on OpenGL. So if you clean up what you've got now, incrementally modernizing that stuff and, and converting things to use Vulkan and using that interop layer will make your lives easier down the line rather than having to do, like, a full rewrite, essentially, to, to, to get you to either full Vulkan support or, or, you know, whatever else you use, or whether you're going to do a separate render pipeline for metal or for whatever happens. So, you know, so on there is that I, I think we'll get an opportunity to discuss this in, in many future meetings. Um, it is something that, you know, uh, Dave P and all the rest of the other graphics engineers that I have kind of been discussing is like, well, when would we go do this, and what are the advantages? Um, you know, but right now, I'm making the decision that we've got other things to work on, um, but, you know, this is a meeting to get feedback, so if you say, well, no, do this first, it's going to enable all these other things right now, and I'm all ears, it's just, for me, it's, it's almost like a... How, how, how transparent are you guys in terms of, like, resources of, like, you know, what, what you can allocate to a task? Like, is, is Linen Labs in kind of the, the, the environment where they can hire a couple no. interns and, you know, get them to fix some of the low-hanging fruit? Like, you know, some of the, you guys have a ton of... Well, the open source community here. <laughs> well, well, there's that. There's that. I'm working on a client, but, you know, like... That there's some basic stuff that can be cleaned up, like LL preprocessor. There's so many disabled oh, MSVC I mean, warnings there that can. I'll, I'll open up the Komodo just a little bit further and say that you know we're. What is one of the other projects we're looking at? Um, so, so you've you've obviously seen that we're doing a lot of performance improvements, and and we're, we're actually continuing to do additional performance improvements and threading is another thing that we're we're looking at and additional cleanup on the client. Um, for instance, how things, uh, how textures um, are streamed is another thing we're, we're about to look at pretty soon. So, um, so we are focusing attention on cleaning things up, improving them, and uh, you know, uh, as far as 
Am I going to show you how am I allocating all the resources and what we're investing in? I mean, I think we're... No, I, I don't mean it like that. I, mean, I more mean, like, is there space, like, essentially for you guys to uh, hire, like, an intern or something like that to, to go and clean up just even low-hanging stuff, like, you know, compiler warnings that you've just got disabled for... I would love somebody to... doesn't want to fix the cast or something like that. I mean, hire and... <laughs> so, um, sure. I, I think we're going to be, in a, over the course of the year, in a hiring phase. Uh, right now, we're, you know, uh, we did recently take on two additional uh, engineers onto the viewer team, and um, I expect that, you know, we'll slowly grow through, through the year. So we'll, we'll have an opportunity to take on more resources, and investing in uh, viewer development is one area that um, I have stated that we're going to continue to make investments in, and we'll hear some of the fruits of those investments. I mean, um uh, there's many different projects. I mean, uh, I think we announced uh, on our year-end blog last year we were working on puppeteering. It's like, well, then you can make arguments like, well, why are you doing that? And why aren't you doing this? So, I mean, I think we'll, we, we, can, we can have those discussions. But we, we definitely have a lot of people working on a lot of different projects, including just let's clean up the viewer and, and, okay. and, and who it is some of the crowd. Yeah, we we actually have had good experiences in the past with uh, uh, with with interns uh, like come in for the summer or something. So that's actually kind of an interesting thought that we uh, might want to might want to revive. We haven't done that for the last several years. I'm open. I'll also say we don't we don't totally ignore you know the the cleanup that 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 can be done. We. You know, a couple of years ago, the viewer was still full of fixed function OpenGL code that, you know, hadn't been called in a decade or so. And, you know, we have made some strides in, in extracting all or, I'm not sure all, but the vast majority of that fixed function code is now gone. So, you know, we do take the opportunity to clean up the cruft when we can, but it's it's just a big job. Yeah. Any idea on whether you guys are going to have proper core support one of these days, or at least you know well, we three point? Support, we or... do support core profile, but it's um, only enabled on NVIDIA cards, I think, at the moment. I'm not 100% sure of the status of this, but I believe uh, there's Intel still requires compatibility profile, and AMD, if if I'm recalling correctly, is just a little bit faster in compatibility profile. So we only selectively turn it on for NVIDIA. Okay. Kitty, I'll take that to, back to the team and ask. Is that is that your work, C? Or who 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 has that? Who made that? Uh, is that did you make that Z? The the go dot? Oh, oh okay. Okay, that's very impressive. Uh, parenthetically about Vulcan, one of the reasons we haven't kind of jumped in with both feet to, to vulcanize everything is that uh, it's not supported on all the platforms. We have a fair number of people using older systems that just, you know, flat out don't have Vulcan libraries installed. So, you know, we need some way to uh, deal with that. You know, the number is going down over time. It's becoming less of a problem, but it uh, it certainly hasn't gone away at this point.
Yeah, there's a there's Molten VK though for Mac. Um, the so the the thing we're more worried about is um, you know just older Windows systems that that you know just flat out don't have Vulkan support and probably aren't going to get it because they've got you know old Intel GPUs or whatever. Said. <laughs> like, is there any sort of metric or any sort of data mining to, to estimate how much, like, of a of the percentage of total income that you get from your user base of people who have those sorts of, you know, ancient dinosaur systems? How much are they really investing into SL? We collect quite a lot of stats from viewer sessions. So, I mean, we do know, you know, how many people out there have, you know, support for this or that library or using this or that type of GPU. Um, so, yeah, I mean, in principle, you could probably, uh, you know, do other types of analysis with that. But, um, yeah, we have we have some idea about that stuff. You guys ever be willing to just up the minimum system rec and just basically give that, that... <laughs> you well, know? we need to update the, the minimum system rec. That hasn't been touched in an embarrassingly long time, but... I don't think we would update it as high as saying that you have to have Vulcan support and just oh. too many people who, who couldn't uh, who couldn't meet that bar right now. It's primarily the primarily the old Intel GPUs. You know, both Nvidia and AMD when they released their Vulcan drivers, they backported it to older hardware, and uh, Intel just released it for that current gen. I think it was about gen five or six and and newer and didn't you know backport to that older hardware so there's just this backlog of intel gpus that don't have it and never will and they're they're going extinct slowly but it's still quite a few of them i think like even windows 11 doesn't work on anything pre-intel eighth gen right so it'll slowly trail off Regarding threading, what are you guys thinking of doing? I mean, uh, <laughs> the objective is to get textures loading faster, and I think uh, I think the question is: is the way that we are prioritizing texture streaming? There's all this optimization that was done in the past, and to try to prioritize textures, and textures kind of come in, but they come in at resolutions that are kind of blurry. So we just want to re-examine that. And I mean, I'm not sure what we're going to do. It's an exploratory kind of um, uh, thing we want to do. But the, the thinking is maybe there's more parallelization that could happen for these textures to come in. Um, right? What would you suggest? I mean, if the problem is, hey, uh, textures uh, don't load fast enough. I, I was just curious of like, just, just what, so you can throw more threads at the problem or if, if I, Something I've been flirting with the idea is that uh, like a multi-cache stage where you, you you have the JPEG 2000 stuff, and if if we are going to instead of keeping it there in cache like locally saved somewhere, we 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 decompress into something that the card can decompress just on itself later and keep, have two caches essentially something that that they can just use natively so it have to be you know process of decompressing and sending it to the yeah, car. avoiding extra decompression steps is one thing that we're interested in um 
we for the performance improvements viewer we did a lot of work with uh moving some of the kind of routine uh updates that have been happening in the main thread into uh into secondary threads um and that gave us you know some benefits in terms of frame rate and also uh just smoothness you know getting a more mm -hmm. consistent frame yeah. rate um so i think uh uh, I think you know. Next time we look at performance uh, and textures, we'll probably try to leverage some of that to, uh, you know, just parallelize more effectively. In addition to whatever else we we tackle. Well, copy, I'm not sure I follow your latest comment. You want to just expand on it just a little bit? All right. I hear you. And Becca, um, yeah, maybe well, this is why I'm throwing it out there is you're saying you've already uh, looked at this problem and uh, have improved upon it. Then we should we should look back and see what you guys did. The uh, performance and improvement viewer also, I mean, we implemented thread pools there for the primarily being used for texture uh, loading and decompression. So um, if you look at that branch, you, you may see that uh, some of the things that you're talking about have already gone into that viewer. On a semi-unrelated note, can I ask like why you guys have your constructor set up the way you do, where you, you have like a standard like object con or you know, class constructor declared, but then you have like an additional init method is there a reason why you guys do that? Like, instead of just baking that into the initial constructor and using like, just a ton of initialization lists, like, bite, bite the bullet, have a little bit more memory? Is that for I mean, that is what I've seen at Microsoft, too, by the way. I, I remember. Uh, there were reasons, but I, I don't know why we do it on the Second Life. Um, someone was said, uh, Maybe someone from my team wanted to speak upon that. Um, I mean, I've seen that for for a lot of singletons and and things where um, it's a sort of a global facility that needs to be accessed from anywhere. Um, you, 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 for that, you definitely need to separate sort of construction from um, from initialization sometimes. Okay. Um, it it kind of depends on a case by case basis, though, for stuff like that. Yeah, I don't know if it applies to the particular classes you're looking at, but I mean, I've seen cases where if you've got multiple, uh, you know, types of constructors, and then they all need to uh, kind of do a lot of similar stuff, you wind up consolidating the similar stuff and doing an it. Oh, yeah. That could be another case. Yeah, uh, Katie, that's exactly one of the comments that uh, I think they P or someone threw out, which is like, well, maybe we should just be getting the whole thing anyway, you know. Um, yeah, I think we discussed that, that. You know, at the time that system was designed, bandwidth was a lot more precious. Um, and so we've we've threaded the individual fetches so far, but I think there is, uh, you know, some thought that it's it's not cost effective to be pulling individual MIPS.
Hey, Coffee. Uh, nothing new on Arctan right now. Um, we are we are reviving uh, the the profiles viewer, and uh, uh, hopefully we'll have something in the not too distant future for that. Um, depended on some new server side work, which is uh, also coming along. So yeah, hopefully, hopefully soon. No, no, I, I wouldn't say Arctan is dead, but uh, it's it's uh, I don't know, it's resting. Um, we're we're trying to uh, trying to find bandwidth for it, and we got a lot of other things getting juggled right now. We talked a little bit about it at the um, the open development user group, but there's more people here now. Um, any interest in updating the CEF version that the, the client uses, considering it's like several versions old? Yeah, I mean we do update it periodically. Um, you know, some some updates are relatively easy. Some the assumptions change and it requires a lot of change to the supporting code. Um, I'm not sure how impactful the latest, you know, changes since release, since our release are, but um, we're, we're going to take a look at it um, and, and see if uh, this looks like a good time to tackle it. Yeah, as Beck mentions uh, regarding Arctan, she's been doing a bunch of cool um, instrumentation to to let you get more detailed information about how you know how long it actually takes to draw uh, you know a particular avatar or a particular piece of uh, you know avatar related content. Um, and that was one of the biggest stumbling blocks when when we we're working on Arctan was that. Uh, um, you know, we didn't have that kind of fine-grained information, so we had to just try, you know, take a bunch of different kinds of content and see how long, like, the whole scene takes to, to render and then kind of look at kind of the, the do statistical analysis on that, look for kind of regression uh, regression lines, um, which, which is pretty cumbersome, and uh, I, I think this should give us a lot better visibility uh, once we get a chance to take a look at it.
All right. Well, uh, I think maybe we've covered what we've got for this week. Um, thanks for coming, everybody, and hope the new time is working out for you all. And we will see you, I think it's next month. I think we're going on the, the new um, two meetings a month schedule starting uh, starting in April. So, so bye all. Thank you. Thanks for everyone's feedback. Stay safe. Have a good weekend. It's good to see you're not still Agent Smith, Kyle. <laughs> I can change that. <laughs> I'm sure you no. can. The sound of it never <laughs> I'm stuck in a meeting at work. I didn't catch most of the meeting. Mostly just text. There was a lot in play. I missed. Same. Is anyone recording this? Pantera usually does.